Plans are in the works to test the spooky action of entanglement by transmitting information between the ground and low Earth orbit. The first beaming up in human history. This technology could be put to use in the development of a new generation of supercomputers. Computers that may one day be fast enough to carry out the complex calculations needed for a more sophisticated transporter. I would use a transporter in an instant if I were assured that I could return home to my loved ones when I so desired. I think it would be a fantastic trip. In J.J. Abrams' reboot of the Star Trek franchise, the villain used a science fiction staple in a whole new way, using a black hole as a weapon. I love the new Star Trek movie. I love the direction they've gone in, but the black hole just broke the part of my brain that likes physics. Black holes are regions in space where matter has been compressed so much that the local gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. If you could drop a black hole into the core of a planet, gone, it would implode. Controlling a black hole is nigh impossible because if you try to manipulate it, you would also implode. Star Trek films, some exotic form of matter that they called red matter, was used to initiate the formation of a black hole inside the core of an existing planet. You aren't generally going to collapse a planet into a black hole using any amount of red slime. This is not going to happen. Of course, in science fact, we recently had our own concerns about black holes and the possibility that in a quest for knowledge, our planet could be obliterated, sucked into the insatiable maw of a black hole we created. In science fiction, such as J.J. Abrams' first Star Trek movie, a black hole created at the center of a planet caused the on-screen deaths of six billion Vulcans. That planet would become part of the mass of the black hole, would be ripped to shreds and disappear from our universe forever. So it is kind of the ultimate doomsday weapon. In science fact, plans to smash subatomic particles together here on Earth raised fears that if the particles were going fast enough when they collided, they could form a black hole, destroying our planet. The new facility that's been built by CERN in Switzerland, the Large Hadron Collider, is designed to explore the fundamental nature of matter, to smash atoms together so that you can break them apart and see what the fundamental building blocks are. For example, they want to find the so-called Higgs boson, which is thought to give mass to all other particles. But they also might produce miniature black holes. Black holes on Earth? Humans tend to view black holes as large, swirling, matter-sucking vortexes from which nothing, not even light, can escape. The idea of one forming in Switzerland, set off alarm bells. But scientists assured a nervous public any black holes formed would be microscopic. Tiny little black holes would instantaneously evaporate, yet nevertheless would exist for a very, very short time. Probability of that happening is small. And even if we did create a microscopic black hole, it's not something that would sink to the center of the Earth and start devouring our planet from the inside out. How does a black hole grow? Think of a paper stick going round and round on the inside of a cotton candy machine. As the stick gathers material, it grows bigger and bigger, just as a black hole does when it sucks in matter. But a microscopic black hole? 
The first thing that happens is it eats the stick very, very slowly. And in fact, in the course of a year, a hungry, angry little microscopic black hole might eat 100 protons. And with the stick going away, with the vortex evaporating faster than it can suck in new material to grow, the microscopic black hole simply disappears. Black holes aren't something that we need to worry about. In fact, there's a supermassive black hole sitting right in the center of our own Milky Way galaxy, minding its own business with stars happily orbiting it round after round after round. You can actually see around the black holes in some of the nearby galaxies, disks of material getting destroyed as it spirals in. And it gets so hot and so dense as it spirals in that it gives off massive amounts of light. If sci-fi writers want to make use of black holes as the bad guy, there is a scientifically accurate way to do so. One of the interesting plot devices that isn't used enough, in my opinion, is the black hole as destructor of the solar system. There could be some small black hole out there on a collision course with our solar system. And we wouldn't see it until it started to interact with the Oort cloud, the cloud of frozen stuff that comets come from in the outer solar system. It could just be on a collision course waiting to destroy our entire solar system, invisible until a few years away from the Earth's doom. The first thing we'd probably notice is the Oort cloud starting to flicker with high energy particles as little bits of ice start to get sucked in. Then we'd start to notice the outer solar system's orbits getting deformed. And then the amount of deformation of orbits would increase as our own planet Earth, depending on which side of the sun the black hole was coming in from, either started to get pulled toward the sun or pulled out from the sun, causing us to die either by fire or ice. And I personally don't think either is nice. The destruction of the Earth is a popular theme in science fiction, with threats to the planet's existence coming in many forms. Take the movie Armageddon. An asteroid the size of Texas is bearing down on our planet. In this disaster movie, it's the science which is the real disaster. I think any scientist will agree that Armageddon, oh my gosh. Um, science fiction, name only, a lot of fiction, not a lot of science. The way they depicted this asteroid that was going to impact the Earth and how they dealt with that threat by sending up a space shuttle and using nuclear devices was, was ridiculous. The problem with that is now instead of having one asteroid that's going to destroy one part of the planet, you have thousands and maybe millions of chunks of asteroid that are going to destroy large parts of the planet. Yeah, blowing up asteroids, really, really bad. You want to move them somehow, not blow them up. But if Earth bites the big one, we'll need a new place to live. The idea of terraforming is you take a world like Mars that is it currently capable of supporting life just walking around on its surface? And you alter the environment, you alter the planet itself in a way that allows human life to exist casually on the surface. Make Mars into a place where we can breathe without a spacesuit, where we can stand outside in our comfortable summer clothes and create a whole new world for us to live on. This would be a pretty phenomenal thing to do, but they think not impossible.